as a major topic of conversation in our country and in our community. Today on Austin Faith Dialogue, we'd like to take you, the viewers of our program, to a new and exciting healthcare delivery system in Austin, Seton East. <laughs> Faith Dialogue, a public affairs series at the crossroads of religion and life. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues in the area in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC TV. Join us now for this week's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. Dr. David Needham are two of the staff members at Seton East. Today on our program, we'd like them to talk to you and explain to you what is happening at this place called Seton East. Deanna, welcome. How did this all come to be? Where did Seton East come from? Well, uh, Seton East is part of the uh, Daughter of Charity Health Systems of Austin, or Health Services of Austin, and uh, it's owned and managed by the Daughters of Charity who also uh, managed Seton Medical Center and Seton Northwest. And I think it came into being um, as a product of the closing of Holy Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, the Daughters of Charity owned Holy Cross and uh, for several years tried very desperately to make that facility work um, to serve the uh, poor population or to find a niche for that hospital to, to serve people that needed uh, hospital. Uh, what happened was um, they were serving a very small population and no matter who they tried, whatever segment they tried, uh, there were not uh, the right mix of doctors and patients to really keep that facility uh, full. Mm -hmm. In addition, the facility needed severe dollar renovations and it got to the point where the daughters had to make the painful decision of whether they continue running a facility that's that costly and do some serious renovation uh, for significant dollars or whether they shut that down and look to find another way to deliver health care on the uh, east side of town mm -hmm. that would serve more people. And they finally concluded that the best thing to do was to shut Holy Cross and uh, find another way. So we had several sisters, Daughters of Charity, uh, come from West Central, from uh, St. Louis, their headquarters, and do a needs assessment in East Austin to determine what would be a better use of those dollars. I think that probably the, what you're saying to us is that there really was a commitment to, um, to the population of East Austin, and there was a uh, grief time of the closing of Holy Cross Hospital and a desire to serve well, they sensed a gap, if you will, in the medical services in the community. Is that correct? Very much so. Yes, you, you put that perfectly. They really wanted to um, uh, make sure that the populations in East Austin, that if there was a gap, if there was a need, that they stayed with a significant presence in that side of town and served that need. And through all the studies at Holy Cross, they were discovering the needs were uh, for a population that couldn't access care. Mm -hmm. And that's what we typically call the working poor. Where is Seton East located? Uh, Seton East is on Pleasant Valley and 2nd Street. And after uh, making the needs assessment study, the sisters came to see that the need was, that was a good place to place a new facility. Yes, is that it's a very good place. It's a uh, very high uh, Hispanic population in that area, and most of the people in that residential area are uh, what we consider working poor. They have incomes, but the incomes are, their gross incomes are between ten and 20000 a year, mm -hmm. and that leaves very little money 
before seeking any kind of medical care. I want you to take us on a uh, quick tour of the facility there. Uh, a few weeks ago, we went and took some footage of that area. So if you would tell us a little bit about the facility at, at Seton East, at sure. Pleasant Valley and 2nd Street. Right. Well, at Seton East, you need to think of it as um, a doctor's office. Uh, we're basically uh, equipped to take care of preventative and um, minor problems, uh, illnesses like uh, blood pressure, uh, uh, heart disease, uh, anything on the, pre on the preventive to the uh, basic illness side, you mm -hmm. know. Um, we have, we serve everything from children all the way up to uh, seniors and we have two family practice physicians and a pediatrician over there plus some nurse practitioners. Uh, to complement the medical side, we have therapists and social workers that work with our folks because typically with the working poor, you are dealing with a population that's not only found that they have medical problems, but oftentimes the medical problems are integrated or uh, have a direct relationship with emotional problems, mm -hmm. with stress, with uh, depression, um, or just need for other resources. Let's follow up on that and I want you also to tell us a little bit about your background and how you happened to arrive at Seton East to become director over there. Uh, Dr. Needham, you're a medical director. Uh, mm -hmm. David, I understand you did your medical degree out of Galveston, right. uh, University, University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. And Tell us a little bit about um, what you have been, what you do, and what your responsibilities are as medical director there at Seton East. Uh, well, there's quite a few responsibilities. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, physician coverage. Uh, we're trying to get a, uh, several volunteer physicians to help us uh, sort of complement our, our own medical staff. We also have um, a unique system of referral in that we've asked the uh, medical staff at Seton Hospital to volunteer uh, some of their expertise should we need uh, more expert uh, help. What do you mean by referral and asking them to volunteer and participate in your program. How does that happen? Well, um, I guess to, I'd have to step back and tell you a little bit about what, um, when the daughters came to, to East Austin, they were actually expecting to see um, minor problems. And in fact, they were hoping to staff the entire clinic with nurse practitioners and uh, a few volunteer physicians. What has happened is that we have had uh, an outpouring of people with very chronic and very serious diseases that they've basically ignored because they haven't uh, been able to afford care. And so we see uh, people with a multitude of problems, uh, problems that need uh, either surgical care or long-term um, expert care. And we've needed uh, some sort of way to uh, ask for people, ask for physicians to help us out because these people aren't able to go to a specialist and pay for a specialist care. Dana, is that what the voucher system is that I heard yes, about? What, yes. Tell us a little bit about that voucher it's system. It's called the St. Luke Society and what we do is we uh, ask physicians to join St. Luke Society and as a member they pledge uh, to provide anywhere from 6 to 12 uh, patients a year that they'll see free in their office for their particular specialty and that way we generate a little voucher at our uh, clinic and when we when Di Dr. Needham or one of the other physicians have to make a referral they go to that specialty area and pull one voucher uh, from behind that doctor's name and basically um, refer that patient to that physician when when we've finished that amount of allowed referrals for the year then we don't send to that doctor anymore until the following year I hear you saying that what what you discovered or what the sisters discovered when they went over there was an entire group of people who were not receiving medical care for one reason or another uh, probably basically economic reasons and that when you went in there, you found that there was a greater need than you had even anticipated. That's right. And so you started looking around for ways that you could better serve this population. And it came out of a, um, a sense of spirituality. Having visited Seton East, what I sensed in the staff was a, a real mission to what you're about and what you're doing over there. 
tell us a little bit about how do you set up the programs and when people come in, if a person was to walk in off the street at Seton East, uh, wh what is the process? What would they do? Who would they meet? And how would you meet their needs? Okay. First, uh, anybody that walks into Seton East is greeted by our social worker, Sister Ada. It was very important to us that it be a social worker because we didn't want um, a person to basically do the eligibility intake that didn't have the sensitivities to pick up what other needs they may not talk about. This is a, a Referring to what now when you say Well, that? this is a proud population. They're coming in um, and they're probably coming in to seek care for that particular problem they have at that moment but the truth is that they have many other concerns and many other needs and uh, Seton East's philosophy is to be a holistic center to really look at the whole person and their whole family right. and so when it, it starts with the social worker but really everybody that touches that patient when they're doing their assessment for whatever uh, they're there to you know do at the time they're always asking questions and looking at other issues or other problems and oftentimes then you'll find that whoever that interaction is with that provider is going to refer them to another service mm -hmm. at Seton East because they've picked up on something else that's a need that possibly that patient would have never thought to bring up so that social worker greets the person that's interested in service and not only determines if they qualify from a financial standpoint because we do want to assure uh, that if they're going to come to Seton East they cannot get services anywhere else so if they have insurance uh, outside of Medicare and Medicaid uh, we do take that because we find that there is not a heavy uh, amount of physicians in this community that see especially Medicaid so that remains in our opinion a, a gap so we do see Medicare Medicaid but other than that if they have private insurance there's other people that can take care of them if they qualify for the um, assistance program that the city uh, funds through the city clinics then we like to refer them there and we will do everything to help them sign up for that uh, that's the, what you call the clinic card that's that they right. can receive at Brackenridge. That's right. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, typically called MAP, mm -hmm. uh, Medical Assistance Program. All right. And what we do is if they fall in a category where they could qualify for any other type of care, then we help them get there. And what we want to see, this, the, because we're limited in how how many people we can see in our facility, uh, we want to be sure that we're limiting that to those that really cannot get access to care anywhere else. And, and payment for those who come in, that is based upon what type of system do you have for that? Payment is a sliding scale and we tried very hard to make sure that payment was not a barrier. Um, again, I spoke of the pride of this community. I don't think they expect things for free. They want to pay. Mm -hmm. um, but if you make the fee so high, they also have a dignity issue and they won't come back for the mere fact that they owe you that money. So we try to do a sliding scale that is um, liberal and it's based off of the net income, not the gross income. And it doesn't look at uh, whether they own a car, whether they own a house, or, you know, it just looks at the income coming in and the number of people that that income is trying to cover. And based on that, we give a discount, making sure that the cost of care is not a barrier to accessing care. Deanna, you've been in the uh, health care system. You were 10 years, did you say, with yes. uh, Seton Medical Center? Mm -hmm. And then coming over this and uh, kind of giving birth, if you will, to this uh, new place, Seton East. Uh, what do you find? It, it sounds exciting to me that there is such a concern for the individual. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you have experienced personally in coming to Seton East. Well, uh, my background's always been in the public relations. I was in the uh, public relations department for five years, and then I went over to the health promotions and uh, uh, directed, managed the Good Health School. Uh, and started the Good Health Club, which is a senior program. So I've always been kind of on the preventive side of, um, of health. Uh, but going over to Seton East has truly been the, the most rewarding um, job I've had with the Daughters of Charity. 
primarily because I'm seeing the lives that, that we change. These people, generally, when they come, as Dr. Nita mentioned, uh, they wait so long to get the care because they don't have the money to go and get the preventative care. And so by the time we see them, oftentimes they're really very sick. And they think it's uh, not curable or it's curable through some, you know, horrible ordeal. Mm -hmm. And it's so rewarding when we find out that it's, okay, it's a severe diabetic who's ignored her, her problem for a long time, uh, couldn't walk she was you know hurting so bad but to be able to come into Seton East diagnose it and then put her on insulin and get her on a diet and then hear her come back and thank us because she's able to walk and do housework and go to the store is just so rewarding and so even though I'm not personally doing the care I feel rewarded every day when I leave there and have heard the stories of the people's lives that we've turned around through um, simple insulin and a little instruction or, you know, oftentimes it's not always that simple. We, we've, we've had to do uh, the surgeries and specialty referrals, but more often than not, it is simple and just a case of getting them in and teaching them and, uh, and changing some habits. And maybe affirming their value as persons. And Absolutely. that you are there in the community to remind them of that value that they have in caring for themselves, which I think is really the task of the entire medical community for all of us. Isn't Absolutely. It? Dr. Needham, uh, do you like children? <laughs> Since I'm a pediatrician, I had to say yes. <laughs> because it got you right where we want all you right. now. All right. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the children you see. And we also have some footage on, on children and care of children there at Seton East. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do in working well, with children. Well, you know, my personal philosophy really is that, that children are our future and um, that they deserve the best care that's humanly available. And um, we do our best. We, uh, I feel overwhelmed several days, several times. and. Uh, we just try to do what we can do. We see a lot of children that uh, are poorly immunized or never have been immunized, and we try to get them up to date. How do you do that, doctor? How do you get that word out about <coughs> immunization? Well, um, I think word of mouth, actually. Uh, Seton East has just become a, a large center for getting children immunized. Uh, we've just recently uh, entered a sort of an, or an organization with the city health system to give children's children immunizations at, in the evening time and it appears that it's the evening hours that are making the difference that uh -huh. um, it's the availability of allowing people to come after they're they've gone to work and come back home to get their kids uh, immunized once again being sensitive to the population being sensitive to their schedule and trying to meet the needs and holding up the most important citizens we have in our community our children what else can you do to help in the area of natural family planning and, and that type of thing? Is that something else that's being done at Seton East? Absolutely. There is, uh, one of the sisters is the uh, counselor for natural family planning. And uh, actually not sure exactly how um, that's going, but she does see people and counsel people on a regular basis. Um, we, as of yet, I'm not sure, have been able to target the teen population, which is a population that we're very concerned about also. Maybe, Deanna, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about that. How mm -hmm. that social worker working in that area of natural family planning and also with the teenage population, what is happening there? Yeah, um, part of the clinic's operation is on what we call the charity outreach side and the educational side. And so in addition to the work that you, you just saw in the video that we do hands-on with those that come in because they need medical help, we're also out there in the community doing what we can in the way of screenings and prevention and in the way of teaching. The Natural Family Planning Program has been a, a wonderful success. In fact, we are delightfully surprised at the kind of response we've gotten. Sister Mary Jo um, counsels about 40 uh, couples a month in natural family planning and natural family planning is both to conceive and not to conceive mm -hmm. so she's had uh, several wonderful success stories uh, with people that were unable to conceive that really wanted a family and then you know of course she has uh, a number of clients that she's helping to to prevent um, having children and I think that's important 
uh, in our Catholic uh, facility mm -hmm. that is one way that we can address and assist that population um, so that they can plan and be ready for their family. The TEEN program is another wonderfully exciting program. It is on the social service side. What we have is a coordinator who herself was a TEEN mom. Mm. And uh, she was able to overcome all the obstacles in uh, bringing up this child and managing to get to school and make a life of her own. Uh, and now she is trained to be able to hold support groups. What we do is we find teen moms that are like her, that are interested in working with teens who are either pregnant or recently have, you know, had children, and do support groups on a weekly basis to help them. How do you find them. those teens? Or how, if a teen wanted to find you, how does that happen? Through, through right. contacts in the community? Or yeah, how right now it? it's well, they active bring their children referral. Too. They bring their children for care, you know, I see. so we tell them about the program at that point, but uh, you know, there's also the, the outreach. Right, it's both. The agencies, we try to get the word out through the agencies, and we try to um, make sure that all of our doctors and our social workers, our therapists, anybody that comes in contact with the patients, mm -hmm. again, in that whole intake process where you're identifying needs, if you've got a, a team that's coming in for care and uh, that's a, a perfect one to say, you know, and by the way, we have this program and we automatically refer them to this. I'm wondering about the um, institutional religious component of all of this. For instance, the congregational structures that are in that community, uh, the parishes that are in that community, are they able to somehow um, work with you and, and notify their parishioners of the resource that St. Nice can be for the entire community? Is that something you do? Do you yes. contact the clergy in the area? We work real close with the Catholic hospitals, uh, the Catholic churches in, um, <laughs> in the area, very close. Uh, we have Chris Attell is uh, one of our staff members that uh, works with the diocese and um, basically is setting up social ministry programs in the churches. And mm -hmm. These are programs where she's uh, finding somebody interested in um, heading up the program in that particular parish, training that person, and then they find volunteers in the parish to be part of this program and help each other in the parish to access services, one of which is Seton East. And so uh, we're hoping through sort of grassroots through this program, uh, letting these people access uh, the clinic. Mm -hmm. And we do, we invite the priest to come in and look at uh, what we're doing. We also take a mammography van out to the churches. Now what is that? That is a, a van that will basically do mammography screenings, breast screenings for cancer. Mm -hmm. And we provide those uh, at $10. It, it costs us $60, but we offer it to the members of the churches at $10 because it's so important to us that these women get a mammogram so that we can, if they do have uh, breast cancer or any signs of uh, tumor or any kinds of, of problems like that, we want to find them mm -hmm. and uh, take care of it early on. If there would be a pastor of a congregational community uh, watching this program today and saying, aha, I want that van to come to my particular congregation, it wouldn't have to be a Roman Catholic parish, right? No. It could be any congregational community in that area. Uh, they would just simply call you? Yes, uh, actually call Sister Mary Jo or call our educational outreach office. It's in Seton East. Okay. And, uh, and they could set it up. There is no problem. We have worked with all kinds of churches in East Austin when we did the charity outreach program where we've gone on Sundays and after uh, Mass, after their services. Uh, we have a team of people and we've done blood pressure screenings. We've done diabetic uh, screenings. So You're there to serve people. We're there to find them, and then if they have abnormalities and don't have a physician, feed them into our system so that they can get care. I want to ask you also about the future. You're going to be expanding. When I was there, uh, there was pretty much excitement. The place was packed. There were people all over, and I understand in January you had 9,000 calls and served uh, almost 1,000 patients during that time in the month. That's a busy place, so you need more room. You're right. going to be expanding. What, 
What kind of expansion do you have and when's that going to happen? Well, currently uh, we have five exam rooms and uh, at any given time we have about two doctors in, at any shift. And that's allowing us to see about 10,000 medical visits a year um, and about 22,000 uh, people served in general when you take into consideration the therapy, the education, and the social service. Uh, what we hope is with the expansion, we'll have the capability to staff up to 12 exam rooms and be able to double our patient volume on uh, all uh, fronts. Yeah, what's going to happen with our good doctor here? I can just see Dr. David over there. He's going to collapse. What, you have some more <laughs> physician help over there? Is she going to arrange that for you? Well, slowly. It's going to, the, the expansion <laughs> will go very slowly. But you will have more demands upon you, your time, your staff. Right. But you're ready for that? Mostly. Praying about that. So Mostly. <laughs> I think one of the biggest challenges in meeting the needs of this population that basically have very little resources to pay back is to make sure that we're good stewards of the money of the Daughters of Charity. And so we do have to watch out that our growth is slow and that it's done in such a way where we're maximizing efficiency. Um, we want to see a lot of people, but we want to see them in a quality way, mm -hmm. making sure that we give them enough time to take care of their problem. We don't want to become, you know, cattle herders and just, you know, run them through. Um, so we want to be real careful that our growth is planned properly and that we, when we do open those doors to more people, that we have the right backup because we sure don't want to lose this good doctor or any of the other ones that are at the, at the center right now. Well, this good doctor, um what is the greatest joy you have at being in seat in these? Besides seeing all those wonderful children, what else is it? Do you have a sense of uh, purpose well, in what you're doing? I think we all do, and that's the, the really nice thing about it. We're all, we all have that determination, um, and everybody is treated with respect, including the rest of the staff, and so it's just a very nice place to work. Dr. David Needham, thanks a lot for being with us on Austin Faith Dialogue, and Deanna Resnick, thank you. Thank you. We understand what you're doing is important not only for you and for the Daughters of Charity, but also for our entire community of Austin. And we invite you to visit Seton East. Thank you for watching Austin Faith Dialogue. May peace be with you. Austin Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7627.